Hi, my name is Mike Matesi and I am the creator of the Force Drawing Approach. I've done quite a few other videos on Stan's Proco channel. Please do go back and watch those videos on force and on form and on shape. And I recommend that you go back to those because they go into a much deeper dive on each one of those subjects. Today what I'm going to be talking to you guys about is how do we bring shape over into anatomy? And then I'm going to share with you some areas of the body that are very common traps to creating symmetrical shapes, and we want to push into asymmetry and forceful shape. So force, by the way, is, you know, is in the line, and the kind of line is a line of motion. You can't draw energy if you're not energetic, right? I need my stroke to actually move. Well, if I don't move, nothing happens. <laughs> Right? And then, oh, I'm terrified, I'm really scared, I draw like this little you know, squiggly line, or I'm scared and I'm gonna sort of you know, caterpillar my way across here, inch my way and inch my way, and you can see that does not look like this. So you have to draw with a sense of bravado. You have to move in order for the line to have movement. I have to do this. Some of you might be asking what I'm using, by the way. This is a Carandash crown, it's wax, right? And you can see it's a shape of almost like a Crayola or something like that. So going back to this, you know, you need the line to move like that. What we're going to focus on is I want to bring this into force shape, and this will then take us into anatomy. What we want to be careful of is the bad shapes, right? So they look like this. Now here, already in this first shape that I created, something invisible happened. I'll do it on the second one. Here I am, I'm drawing like this. You see me put down two lines but I want you to be aware that in my mind, I'm not really thinking so much about the lines as I am the shape that they create. So although there's all this energy and effort put into making these forceful lines, the lines later on as you go through force and form take the back seat to the shape itself because it's shapes that we're trying to design, right? So here's shape three. These are all bad shapes, right? They're bad because they're all symmetrical Rhythm is asymmetry, and that's what we want to try to get to. Force can be straight and symmetrical, like a pull can have energy in it. But rhythm is asymmetry, and rhythm is there because it balances out masses. Our human bodies are made to move, so we're constantly off balance, and because of that, our anatomy is made to keep creating and justifying for balance. All right, so what do we want? Right, we want force shape. So force shape is to look for asymmetry. So typically, it's a, uh, it's a curve against a straight. So I'm creating a shape. That's fine. This actually works. See, because of the asymmetry, I have a curve that directs me to a new location. And I could put another force shape over here with another straight. And now this energy is going to move from shape number one to shape number two. All right, we'll call this one and call this two. So this flows from here to here. And I have a straight on this side and a straight on this side. Straight, by the way, can be many different things. And we're going to see that today as we talk a little bit about the anatomy. I can even concave it a little bit. Remember, what I can't do is our third bad shape was um, like a tube. And a tube is just as bad if it has the parallelness that this has you know, when it's bent. right? It's almost like rubber hose animation. <laughs> So that doesn't work either. It, it becomes rubbery. There's no uh, structure to that. Let's move into our next section here, which is what are some areas of the figure where artists typically trap energy, right? They trap force, All right? So I'll draw an arm the way I used to draw an arm <laughs> in high school, which used to be something like this, right? So here's an arm. Uh, and I would say, well, you know, and I was working out. So of course I was as buff as this drawing, <laughs> right? So here's this deltoid. Right? And I'll tone it in because we're looking at the shape. You would end up doing something like this. So I call this bubble anatomy. And the problem here is if we really go into the idea of how these lines are force lines, not only are we creating a bad shape, the lines also are kind of just constantly um, converging, right? I think for some reason for me, I always think of uh, like two stunt car drivers, you know, starting at the same place at the same time and then ending at the same place at the same time and they crash because they're not offset. If one was a curve and one was a straight, the guy in the straight line would get to the end first, right? And the other one's got to push through the arc and everything. So there's constantly being this offset of, of timing. Um, and just like I said, from a shape standpoint, you know, we basically have symmetry in shape number one. Again, this would be one. Let's call this two. I have symmetry here as well. And then I have symmetry here as well, right, in shape three. So I'm basically like trap, 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 right? So even past number one, I could just never get by it. So I don't really fluidly get down 
from shape number one to shape number three. I get stuck all the way up here, just balloon after balloon after balloon. So another trap is in the leg. So let's say this is like the groin or crotch area here. I'm just gonna create a very simple V shape. The template for the leg when it comes to force is uh, what I call outside thigh, uh, inside knee, and outside calf, right? And then it goes to inside ankle and outside foot and so on. What we can assume here is every time I put down a, a curve, I can put in a straight. And if I put in a curve here, I put in a straight. And if I put in a curve here, I could put in a straight. But this is like the general flow, right? The general flow of it all. This even can be split up into two curves because there's muscles in this shape here. And this is the sartorius, which comes down from the tibia, or I should say up from the tibia and makes its way all the way to the um, iliac crest over here, the pelvis, right? So you have this kind of shape over here. Right? You get this shape here and then you have this sort of like big teardrop for where the quadriceps go, right? It's like right here, right? So you get these two shapes, one and two. So that's good. Over here, I'm using the edge of the tibia and I've got the ankle. The ankle is typically higher on the inside, lower on the outside, by the way. And then I'll add the gastronemius as another shape. Notice, by the way, it's actually another straight to curve shape. It goes like this, right? So I had two of them against one another here. I had this bigger one, right? Which is the tibia and the exterior muscles here. And then this other one, which is like this little puzzle piece, I can almost like click on to the side here, right? And overall, it gives me a good silhouette, right? I've got this really good silhouette now for, um, for the lower leg. Similar to the arm, you know, students will do this, right? So there's the leg, right? We get the bubble anatomy. They'll draw a knee. So that doesn't work, right? Again, we've put another bubble in there, lower leg, another bubble in there. Right? And you can see that the issue with all this is it's all symmetrical. One last one I'll put down here at the bottom, that's a typical trap, is the neck. And this, as you saw, right, this is a bad shape. Right? We don't want that. So how do I get around it? Uh, it's anatomy, actually, it helps me get around it, because this is like an oversimplification of the neck. If we were to draw uh, a head here, let's say here's an ear, and here's like the bottom of a jaw, right, something like this. And we come down here, there's uh, your clavicle, right? It might be something like this. There's a muscle back here called sternocleidomastoid, right? And that muscle flows in relationship to the upper back, right? So the upper back is going this way. And what we want is to see the sternocleido um, arch its way down. It could even hook in reverse down here where it grabs onto the clavicle. Sometimes it's like a grappling hook. And over here, you can even start this way. Now you'll see, um, if this is force, and I push into, you know, from a curve like this to a curve like this, they kind of bounce off of one another. What I need here is a catch, right? I need the force to grab, you know, this force to grab the prior one so I can, I can keep moving it ahead, right? So here's what matters, right? See, I could take this and this with the sartorius muscle, and this will sweep in like this, right? If the neck is dead on, it actually wouldn't pinch like this. Um, you know, typically what will happen is the sartorius will um, sweep out like this on either side and then hook into the, uh, into the collarbone, something like this, you see. So we're bringing over this force shape to anatomy specifically. A muscle typically looks like this. This is a tendon. There's tendon down here too. So tendons are always at beginnings and ends of the anatomy. They're like a rope. It's where all of the musculature sort of tightens up and squeezes up at the ends. And then the muscle itself will just be something like this. And the muscle, let's say, is here and here. You can see it's starting to look like a piece of chicken or something. <laughs> For me, that's a problem because I'm like, ah, that's, you know, its force is just basically stretch, right? And maybe a little compression, you know, because muscles contract and stretch. That's how our anatomy works, by the way. If you don't know this, the way muscles work and our body moves is really by muscles um, shrinking, right? They contract. And by contracting, for instance, my bicep is attached up here and it goes over the joint of my elbow. So when I shrink this muscle, it brings my lower arm up to my shoulder, right? So this, this gets bigger by it shrinking and allows this to move, right? And if I go down the other way, it's like a mixture between the bicep releasing and my tricep engaging. So that's how it's working. But you know what, we're not just, these muscles aren't just floating on the body. Believe it or not, what's helping us is the fact that there's bone in here, right? So here's my little cartoon bone. <laughs> Let's say this is the um, humerus. 
So this in a sense is like a straight because the muscle is always against something hard. My humerus is going through my arm, right? And the bicep is pushing against that. You see, it's not like it's contracting and looking like this. Let's say this is my bicep. It's not like suddenly it's doing this. Now, sure, I was just, I, I like, being my own devil's advocate, I'm like, hmm, would I ever see that? Maybe, maybe if I took a camera and looked straight down at my bicep, I can force a perspective of the view of the um, anatomy to look like that, but I don't want that, so why am I gonna do that, right? What I'm trying to do is get good shapes out of this, okay? So here it is stretched, here it is contracted, a little squash and stretch action going on. But typically what's happening is against the bone, because this is your straight, now we can talk about the muscle is doing this, you see? And ah, that looks familiar, right? All of a sudden we have four shape, you see? So we wanna keep that in mind. We wanna have these straights and curves if possible. Now I can actually like design the straight to curve concept of a muscle. And by the way, when you're doing this, a small side note, be aware of where the apex is, right? That's when you really start to play with design. So this one is kind of in the middle, but I could have done a bicep muscle and this is, real, like everyone's got the same muscles, but slightly different, right? Slightly different designs. You might find that somebody has a bicep muscle that, that peaks high, right? So this one's like over here. You know, let's peak it even higher just to make it obvious. Like peaks high, you see? Or peaks low, right? Somebody might have a bicep muscle that does this. So to me, that's fun. That's the fun part, right? It's like, hmm, how do I want to design this? Some biceps, you know, you'll have numerous peaks, right? You'll have bicep come up, hits a peak here, then it angles down a little bit, then it pulls in, right? This leads me to thinking about people like JC Leindecker. Very shapey, very designed, very clear apexes and points to clarify the shape and design of whatever he is painting or drawing. You know, we went from like generic muscles, we got our tendons, how the body works. And then on top of that, it's bone that really helps us get those straights in there and the curve is pushing out against it. And of course, the more it pushes out means it's contracting, right? It's shortening, therefore getting wider because the volume doesn't change. It's very much in the mindset of an animator, right? The shape and volume doesn't um, get bigger or smaller. It's not like I'm adding air to a balloon or taking air out of it. Uh, what I'm doing is something that's thin and long is going to get wider uh, and shorter uh, as the same volume when it contracts, right? So that's how it's all working. So that's the basics of force anatomy. Um, follow me over to the next uh, episode where I'm going to demonstrate how all of that works with some models. Hope this all makes sense. Always feel free to email me. Uh, here I am publicly telling you my email address is mike at drawingforce.com and I'm always open to you emailing me and trying to answer your questions. Check out the site, check out the books, which is how most people know me. And that's it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks again. Hey, you're still watching. Well, while you're here, let me tell you about proco.com. With a free account, you get access to an art community filled with dedicated learners, talented mentors, and some incredible instructors. You can build connections with other art students, participate in challenges, ask for feedback on stuff, and learn with people just as passionate about art as you. Signing up is free, so come make an account and start learning today at proco.com.